When I am at the Public Safety Building, where several members of the Rochester Police Department have briefed us more on what exactly happened on scene at the shooting last night and how the immediate actions of five officers helped their colleagues' life. More on that in a second. I want to give you a quick update on the officer's condition. Chief David Moore says that he is in serious condition and, like you said, fighting for his life. That's right, Mike. The community outpouring of support could be clearly seen at this prayer vigil. We're back at the scene of Saturday night's shooting. This is the same street where someone shot the RPD officer in his head. You just heard there Superintendent Akronovich essentially saying he plans to rethink his proposal. He'll be meeting with Alexander and other music teachers on the issue. Teachers say the theory is not all schools should be the same. A variety of programs is healthy, but still no timeline on when a definite decision will be made. Made. Reporting in Greece, Banyan Lee, our news. Amy, the windows at this PNC are covered in clearance signs, but some customers we spoke to don't care about the, the lower prices at their grocery store because it means that their only local food store is closing. The community we're talking about is about 4,500 people in the town of Galen and the village of Clyde combined, mainly depend on this location for their groceries. Soon, they'll have to look a little further for food. They come by lawnmower here, horse and buggy, um, tractor, bicycle. When you enter Clyde, residents like Deborah Hanna will tell you this is a small enough community in which you wouldn't necessarily need a car. But as in most communities, you do need a grocery store. Who wants to get in their car on a cold day where the roads are really bad and go to the grocery store, you know? It's just so much easier to run across the street and get them. This town, nothing's too far away for everybody. You can walk around this town like in two miles. On May 2nd, when Clyde's only grocer leaves, residents will take their money to surrounding towns. The impact that it would make, uh, economic impact and loss to our community, uh, could possibly affect the tax base in the long run. Village Mayor Jerry Freemouth says the Syracuse-based company informed employees two weeks ago its Clyde location would be shutting down. Town and village leaders are working to bring in a similar business. We've organized a group of people together and we're putting feelers out there just to try to get people to come in and know that we have an interest of having a store here to hopefully bring potential people in. The PNC did not return our phone calls for comment as to why they decided to close this location. Town and village leaders are working on an incentive package for future investors. They say the only bump in the road, so to speak, are two super Walmarts that are coming into the area, one south and one to the west of Clyde. One of those super Walmarts will be going in across the street at the PNC in Seneca Falls. And area leaders are guessing those super Walmarts have something to do with these grocery store closings. Amy? Amy, it's a very different scene here one night later. Demolition crews took down the house, and not much is left here on Holly Street. Investigators do not have many answers for us right now as to why they say Holloway set the fire and how he did it. The alleged arson left four people homeless. We just got out of town. We didn't even have any clothes on. I had grabbed this on the way out the door and had my bathrobe on. I gave my wife my bathrobe. Jeff Wright Hill is one of four residents who watched their house go up in flames late Monday night. I'm in school. I got school at 8 o'clock in the morning and all my books and everything. And, you know, after everybody was out, that's the next thing that went through my head. Well, everything is gone. Everyone in the house survived. Residents will have a chance to face 20-year-old Jermaine Holloway. Fire investigators charged Holloway with second-degree arson. The investigators worked uh, uh, through the night trying to gather all the information with the witnesses that were there. An investigation firefighters called exhaustive will soon turn out answers to the why and the hows these residents might be asking. God is with us today. Holloway will be arraigned in city court tomorrow morning at 9.30. The deputy fire chief told our news more details about the incident will come out once court proceedings begin. The Red Cross is now helping those residents get back on their feet for now. Amy? And of course we will continue to follow the story uh, Wednesday morning. Banyan Lee reporting from Holly Street.
I'm on Bainberry Way where the shooting happened around 3.30 this morning. The victim's body, a male white, was found just beyond that speed limit sign on the sidewalk. Greece police say the shooter is a resident on this street. The man told police he saw a group of guys outside and thought they were breaking into either his or his neighbor's property. The shooter told authorities he went outside with a handgun. A confrontation ensued and that's when the man says one of the three guys outside charged at him. The, Bain the Bainberry Way resident shot the male twice. Two other people fled from the scene on foot. Monroe County assisted us with a canine check of the area. Uh, for the other subjects that had, uh, that had left, and that proved to be negative. Uh, at this point, the investigation is ongoing. Police are questioning the shooter. They have not yet identified the deceased victim. They were searching for the two other men who fled the scene. They did call off that search because of the weather. However, police say they are still people of interest, and they are asking anyone with any information to please call 911. Reporting in Greece, Banyan Lee, our news. Amy, the community is still learning to process this information, and part of processing the, that information is understanding why authorities found what they did in the hours after the Canandaigua senior committed suicide in the middle of fifth period. Mr. Kane also had 30 rounds of ammunition on his person and in his locker. A short time later, it was discovered that there was two in IEDs improvised, improvised explosive devices located in Mr. Kane's locker. Canandaigua police responded to the high school after two students discovered Kane's body in a bathroom around 11 o'clock this morning. Authorities immediately evacuated the building and that's when they found the weapons. This young man made a decision uh, that did not entail causing harm to others. I think that's critical no matter what may have been other types of options or things that he was thinking about. I had no clue anything was going through his mind like that. I talked to him Monday in class and he seemed absolutely fine. From the school parking lot hours after the incident. Uh, I just came down, remembered him. To a local church, students are doing what they can to understand the tragic end to what started as what students expected to be a normal day at school. And we talked for like five minutes and then I went to my other school. I really, it shocked me because like, he doesn't seem like the type of kid that would have that sort of stuff. Police say they have not found a suicide note or any indication from Kane to explain the weapons or his suicide. Now this is an ongoing investigation and authorities are talking to his closest friends and classmates to try and find more answers. Now for students that are coming back to school tomorrow, they will have a later start, two hours later than usual. Faculty and staff will be here at normal time and they will have a meeting, a briefing to figure out how they're going to prepare for the classroom tomorrow. Amy. Well, Dan, this is probably one of the busiest spots in the area tonight. We are at the Jefferson Road Post Office in Henrietta. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like, the traffic behind me has been pretty steady coming in and out. They've, post, they've got post office workers out in the street directing traffic to make sure the flow of cars remains steady. And actually, we are in the tax deadline rush, which will be going on between now and about 9 p.m. tonight. A post office spokesperson said there was some confusion last year with customers as to how long the post office stayed open for stamps and full service. So we will reiterate the full service window where you can buy stamps or have your tax forms weighed is opened until 9 p.m. You can still drop off forms at the drop boxes outside the location or use the automated systems inside until midnight. Postal employees will be sweeping those spots to make sure your forms are postmarked by the deadline. Boxes out all through the city in Monroe County. Whatever time they say on them is the last time. We do not have any different hours for those collection boxes. So if you get to a box and it says its last pickup of the day is 4 o'clock, do not think it's going to get picked after 4. It's not. So it'll have tomorrow's date on it. Some good advice there. Also worth mentioning, there will be some postal employees standing out on Saginaw Drive which is to the east of this building. It's the street east of the post office building on Jefferson Road. They will also be out there until midnight collecting your forms. Dan? Yeah, the big question is, Banyan, have you sent in your tax forms yet? I have sent in mine. I did not wait until the last minute for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I sent mine in the very first day I got that W-2. But you know, There you, you got, go. You That's those... probably the best way to do it, to avoid these lines. Yeah, but those procrastinators out there, you know they're going to happen. All right. They're out there. Banyan.